I'm Khalil Hacker, and thank you for accidentally tuning in to another episode here on Slacker Reviews. Today I'm going to talk about a movie that I find particularly underrated, although it is done by a very well-known director. You may know him from such movies as The Dark Knight Trilogy, Interstellar, Inception, possibly The Prestige, or even Insomnia, but this movie that I'm going to review today is probably his most underrated, Memento is directed by the great Christopher Nolan, and it stars Guy Pearce, Carrie Ann Moss, and Joe Pantoliano. The movie is about a man named Leonard Shelby. He suffers from short-term memory loss, and he's on this rogue investigation to find this man of whom we find more out about as the story progresses. Now, the most interesting thing about this already very intriguing story is the way it's told. To put the viewer in Leonard's shoes, the film is told chronologically backwards. This means we start the film from what would normally be the last scene of the movie, and we end the film on what would normally be the beginning. This is done by having a scene which is a few minutes long, and then cutting to a flashback of what would be the beginning, and then after that flashback, going back to that scene, but playing the scene that would be previous to that scene, and then going back to the flashback, continuing the flashback, and then going back to the previous scene, and then show the scene prior to that scene. I know it sounds really confusing, but believe me, if you just watch it, it'll click with you. It's written by Christopher Nolan and his brother Jonathan, and it's directed by Christopher Nolan. So, believe me, you're in good hands. Now this is a really amazing tactic to making this film, because Every time an important event happens to Leonard, he takes a photo of it, he takes a note of it, he even makes tattoos on himself. And when we first meet Leonard, he has all this information, but, you know, he has short-term memory loss, so he's really confused when he first sees it all, as are we. The film also talks about memory in general, how it can oftentimes deceive us or change over the pass of time. There are also many subtle things that the director places throughout the film to test your own memory, which makes the movie very rewatchable. On the special edition DVD of it, there's a memory test in which you have to take to even start the movie, which is kind of scary. I've never seen a movie done this way before, and it's honestly really cool because every time we meet a character for the first time, it's the last time that Leonard is meeting that character. It's almost like watching a TV series, but watching the episodes in a reverse order, which makes our opinions of each character change drastically as the film goes on. You don't truly know who they are until the very end of the movie, which honestly, technically, would be the very beginning of the movie. To have characters with constantly changing roles, a movie like this has to have a great cast, which for the most part it does. Guy Pierce plays the lead role in this movie, Leonard Shelby, and he does it greatly. He has this depth with his facial expressions that really show his confusion, even though his character is still trying to play it cool. Speaking of cool, Guy Pierce plays his character as a very cool, well put together person, despite of his constant confusion. His narration is spot on and is very reminiscent of the very cool anti heroes of like 1940s noir flicks. It's honestly really depressing that this movie didn't boost his career into superstardom. Joe Pantoliano plays Leonard's kind of sidekick. He gives him all the intel and makes sure he gets to where he needs to go. Teddy is probably the hardest character to read in this movie, which is saying a lot. I can't imagine anyone else playing this role because he plays it as kind of sleazy, but still with good intentions. It's really hard to decipher whether or not he's a sleazeball with a heart of gold, or just a sleazeball. I don't want to give too much away, but because of the opening scene, 
He's the character that you tend to watch the most, and because of his performance, he's very easy to watch. My least favorite aspect of this movie has to be Natalie, who is played by Carrie Ann Moss. She's another friend to Leonard, but her character is somewhat bland. I don't know if it's the way she's written or if it's Carrie Ann Moss's wooden acting that just makes me not believe her performance. I just don't feel for her. I just don't believe her emotions in this one. Also, there's a certain scene in this movie that I just have a hard time believing that her character would do. And there's really no reason given for her doing it other than she can, just because she can. Now, because this is a review, I do have to nitpick and be a little bit of a douche. So, in one of the pictures that Leonard has that he takes for his memory, he's making an expression, and this is a picture that we get later on the movie, so I won't give away too much, but he's making this expression after a certain event that I just don't believe Leonard would make. And I know it sounds kind of stupid to talk about now, but it just kind of didn't make sense, and it really throws you off, and believe me, if you see it, you'll know what I'm talking about. It'll bug you too. There were also a few things that were left kind of open or unresolved, but honestly, they're just small compared to how great this movie really is. Overall, I'm going to give the film Memento an 8.5 out of 10. Please go find this movie. Go find it on Netflix. Go rent it at a video store. Go buy it at a pawn shop. Something. It's a great movie, it's worth a watch, and it deserves your attention. Fun fact about the first time I watched this movie. I was really getting into Christopher Nolan. I had just watched The Prestige, and I was like, I really like this guy. So I looked him up, and I saw he did this movie Memento. I didn't read anything about it. It was just kind of like one of those things that stayed in the back of my head. I went to this pawn shop randomly one day, and I saw on the shelf Memento. And I was like, hey, Chris Nolan directed that. And I pick it up, and it's just this. It's this. It's this. It looks like, you know, like a patient at a hospital, their file thing, you know? And it's two dollars. It's memento, it's two dollars, and this is it. it. It looks like medical files. It, you know, legitimately has medical files. These are files for medical stuff, I guess. This is the movie. I didn't know anything about it. I, I know nothing about memento at this point. And so I come home, and I put it in. And like I said, the menu for this movie is kind of scary. And I figure out a way to play it. I hit play, and the entire hour and 50 minute thing, I'm just looking at it like, And it was great. I loved it. I loved every second of it. And I kind of wish I didn't tell you guys anything about it, you know, going into it, because it is a great experience to just kind of go, whoa, that's really cool. But, you know, I feel like I did have to talk about it to get it a little more known, because there's not a lot of people who would pick it up just because it has the director's name on it. That's just the kind of guy I am. Like this video? Agree with what I'm saying? Then like this video? and leave a comment below. Hate this video? Disagree with everything I'm saying? Then start an argument with the guy who likes this video down in the comments below. Now please subscribe and tell your friends about this video. Let's get good movies a little more well known. Let's spread it like a disease, but like a good disease. Let's spread it like... I can't think of any good diseases. But let's spread it. Let's get it around. Let's get it well known. So, that's it for this one. Now, go slack off.